Hey guys, it is Wednesday, June 5th. I have a special guest on today. Ben Nolan, the lead developer for CryptoVoxels, comes on to talk about all kinds of cool shit. We discuss the platform, some key updates coming up in the near future, and the value behind CryptoVoxels on the Ethereum blockchain. It's a great conversation. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and share this with a friend, family member, your kids, your grandparents, or someone you think would like to learn more about blockchain. All right, guys, enjoy. This is the Block Hash Podcast. Lord Nolan, is that you? That is me. Is that? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How you doing? Yeah, really good. I'm just uh, trying to dial, dial in the microphone. No, wait, not like this one. Like that. Just, am I pretty clear? Yeah, I can hear you. You're good. Okay, cool. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. Are you in the van right now? <laughs> no, um, I'm going out. Uh, me and Nick are going out in the van uh, in about an hour. It's like... um. I can't get to Nick's house too early because he sleeps in. So, um, right. Yeah, it's uh, if I get over there at midday, he should be awake by then. <laughs> yeah, that van is freaking awesome. Did you just slap a CV sticker on it? Yeah, yeah. Put like a big, it's like a um, like a twenty inch um, high um, crypto voxel sticker. Nice, nice. I'm gonna have to figure out how to do that too. That's that's freaking sweet, man. We gotta voxelize the van and put it into a parcel somehow. <laughs> Yeah, I, there's a, when I go on my daily run, there's like a cool kind of like a concrete block building that's halfway up on the hill where I go on my run, and it's got all this amazing graffiti over it. And I um, took my phone the other day, took photos of it from every angle, and then put it into into crypto voxels like just to try out the build tools. And yeah. it was really cool. So when I run past it, when I see it in the world, it's kind of surreal. Yeah, maybe we can get it into Magic of Voxel and then maybe slip it into CV somehow. Yeah, Magic is cool. Like I've got that little the little Vox support for the small ones, but um, the Magic of Voxel didn't work so well for doing the large voxel parcels. Like for just because Magic here is all about those flat shaded voxels instead of textured ones, and so I found that when you did like a whole parcel with these big, you know, twenty five centimeter colored blocks, it was kind of it was hard to get a sense of your scale. Um, and I find that te- the ones that you can build in world seem to work much better because they've kind of got that texture outline of them. Um, in the older version, I used to have a little bit of a specular map, so they're a little bit rough when you're really up close to them. Just means that they look a lot more real and they kind of like, and they have the nice shading. Um, so yeah, Magic of Voxel is awesome for those small models though, like creating small things and like for creating hats and avatar attachments once that happens. Yeah, I've played around with Magic of Voxel quite a bit and it's it's pretty cool. It's, it's hard to figure out at first. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of hard to adjust it for um, for CV. Finally figured it out a while ago, but yeah, it, it's a little finicky. Yeah, it's super cool once you get used to it. Like I, because yeah, when I first used it, the UI is so weird, um, and I couldn't even work it out to open and save. But once I kind of got that sorted and then worked out how all the tools work, it's it's super nice. Like being able to just paint on them. So what I normally do for most of the models in the world is I'll draw them in Blender, like create like um, a like a top hat or something like that, just out of a bunch of basic shapes. And then I'll export an OBJ and then drag that into Magicka and then it kind of imports it as a voxel shape. So it's easier than drawing in Magicka. And then I just use the paint tools to like paint it in the right colors that I want and stuff. And I find that's a really, really nice way to build. Yeah, that's that part's really fun too. I've been cheating a little bit because I've been going out and getting all the .stl.obj models that you can use for like 3D printing. And then there's like a generator mm-hmm. that'll voxelize it for you and then I'll, I'll voxelize it um, w- with whatever... Um, amount of voxels it'll allow me to do uh for cv depending on like before when you had like the import and everything it only let me import so many voxels because of the voxel size so i could only get so specific on the definition but i've been cheating and importing those and into magic of voxels and then into cv yeah like um well and like the new small mini voxel support that's only like 30 centimeter 32 by 32 by 32 in size so it's really limited and I basically just did that just to try out, just to get everything kind of working on the system and make sure it's robust. But once it's going, I'd like to increase them. The, the cool thing about Vox is it's kind of a weird format because it was invented by Magic of Voxel, but it's actually really easy to pass. And it's um, it always generates quite good geometry. Like if you compare it to something like an OBJ file, right. if you're importing random OBJ files, it's really hard to kind of do a good job of it because they can have textures and they can have kind of degenerate geometry and they can have just a, a bunch of weird stuff, which means you have to do quite a lot of processing before they'll 
import performantly into the world versus like a 32 by 32 by 32 voxel is always going to take pretty much the same number of time, amount of time for the computer to import it. It's always quite a small file. It's quite easy to like validate it on the server when it's being loaded. So it's, um, it's, it's kind of a, a nice format to support to start with. And, you know, it totally keeps with the crypto voxels name. I think like, I'm not sure if one day I will allow like just full, full freeform geometry. I assume it'll happen eventually, you know, just any kind of OBJ file or GLTF, but, um, it's kind of nice just to stick to that kind of voxel aesthetic for now and just see how far we can go with it. Yeah, I really like that aesthetic, actually. it It's really kind of funny because I grew up watching uh, Minecraft come up and everyone play on Minecraft. And I always thought it was like the stupidest thing. Like I could never understand why people wouldn't want to play around on Minecraft and um, build stuff on there. It just seemed like a vo- like a voxelized world just seemed really stupid. And then once crypto voxels came around and I was like, whoa, this is so cool. And I started like such a hypocrite when I go back and look at it and I'm like, oh, okay. Minecraft actually was pretty cool. Minecraft has done a lot of cool things. Yeah. I, I never, I never really got, um, I'm just gonna put some headphones on cause you might be getting some feedback. Yeah. Yeah. I was, cause yeah, Minecraft's a weird one because, um, I never really got into it that much. Like, but what I did really like about it is I discovered a whole bunch of the, like the multiplayer servers where people had built these crazy servers with lots of mods and we're running games in them. And I found that was a really fun place at the same time. No, it's, it's really cool uh, seeing that format for crypto voxels and it's very simplified and it's almost kind of fitting for the industry and everything and getting people into it. And it's not like overly complex. Um, it, it's very different than Decentraland too, which is taking on like a completely different like visual and shape than crypto voxels is. Yeah, yeah, like I think the different kind of aesthetic is really what kind of sets the projects apart. And like there's so many different ways to solve this kind of like multi-user space that's owned on the blockchain. So it's kind of cool to see there's a bunch of them. Like there's Somnium space and there's High Fidelity and there's Janus VR um, and there's like Next Project Substrata. There's just lots of lots of different ways and different visuals of doing it. And um, I think what most of them have in common is they're all going for a pretty – like they always optimize for performance rather than super high end. Like I haven't really seen any of these engines or any of these worlds that are doing kind of like AAA style graphics. Everything's like a, a little bit simpler and a little bit kind of designed to run on the low end. Um, like CryptoVoxels runs on a mobile phone, which like is awesome. But I didn't even I didn't even know that would work when I was building it. I was just building it for the desktop, and then um, I tweeted a link to it, and my friend was like, "Hey, how do you walk around? I'm on my phone." And I was like, I don't even know it would load on the phone. So then we added like game thumbpad support and then you could actually explore the full world, which was pretty cool. Yeah. It, yeah. The phone aspect's really nice because every once in a while when I'm, I'm on like the Discord channel and I hear that someone's built something new or we get an artist coming to CV and they put something cool up and I'll, I'll pull it up on my phone to like jump in real quick and take a look at it because that part's really nice. Uh, the portability of it. And I'll be sitting in like a restaurant or something. Someone will walk by and they always think I'm like playing Minecraft on my phone or something. And I, I, I just can't explain to them that it's, it's um, a virtual world on the Ethereum blockchain. They just have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so I just kind of like nod and like, yeah, it's, it's kind of like Minecraft. I've got some friends um, and my wife who kind of sort of get the, the rough kind of like broad strokes of what CryptoVoxels is. But they still don't quite understand how it, is my full-time job now, you know, that the city exists and that, you know, like the, that gallery ran an opening last week and raised three and a half ether or 3.9 ether or something from donations in world. Yeah. Which is amazing. So like people are actually building and running art galleries and built, and hopefully we'll be building small businesses in crypto voxels. And it's so cool to enable that. Um, yeah. And just to be really enmeshed in the, the, the um, Ethereum ecosystem. Yeah. I think it's really sparked um, a lot of innovativeness, um, a lot amongst the people that are in the crypto voxels community from what I've noticed, at least, I mean, especially with like the artists coming in, cause it's such a great platform, especially if you have your artwork as an NFT and with you, you being able to display it in world now and walk around and say, Oh, I like that NFT or I like that artwork. And then being able to actually buy it directly or go to OpenSea um, or link to OpenSea to buy it. It's a really cool feature because it really emphasizes the idea that at some point, you're going to be able to completely walk around in crypto voxels and you're going to be able to have some sort of commerce. You're going to be able to interact with people. You're going to see a lot more entrepreneurs coming to the platform. And I think that's one of the most exciting things about it. 
Yeah, totally. Like um, I was like a, when I added that NFT support, like someone just asked me one morning and it was actually really quick to build because I built it on the OpenSea API. I think it took like an hour to get the initial NFT support and then like another hour to get that little sparkly border working. And it just, and crypto voxels went crazy for a couple of weeks for a week after that. Like people really loved that. And so then I went to the next step, which is to have that, the buy button in world. And I haven't actually seen, I don't see many places where people have the buy button enabled. Um, and I kind of wonder if the way I did it is a little bit, I get, I just wonder if it's not quite right because like when you walk around an art gallery, you know, an art gallery in crypto voxels just has the, wall, the art on the walls and if you enable the buy button, it looks a little bit cheesy in a way. It's like, here's my art gallery with big honking buy buttons. So I wonder if maybe I need to make it a bit more subtle um, about how you can actually, so instead of having an explicit buy button, have every single NFT, you can click on it, it shows you the detail without having to go to OpenSea and then you can buy it but without having to have that big honking, you know, because when you're at art right. galleries in the real world, they don't have big for sale signs, you know, in red and white hanging over the front of the art. It's, you know, the little tiny little sign with a, with a little tiny little price on it. So I feel like um, enabling that commerce in world, like I really want that whole flow to work. Like I want to be able to go up to artwork, buy it in world, do the MetaMask transaction without leaving, without going to OpenSea. And then I, I eventually want it to sh sh turn up in your crypto voxels inventory, which would just be like an inventory of everything that your wallet holds. Um, that's that's kind of, that's where I'd like to see it go. And so I think lots of people would like to do it that way. And I think it's a really fun way to go shopping. So, um, but yeah, it's not quite there yet, but that's that's the longer term goal. Yeah, it's a really good start though. I, I'm actually using the NFTs with the buy button in the... What did I call it? The N the ENS building in Doom, in ah uh, yeah 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 I, I saw that yeah yeah I think if you it, I don't I don't know it looks interesting the um the whole buy button feature I like the aspect of the buy button because it gives you that I should click it right now or I should try and buy something while you're in world um, but depending on how high you set the ether limit I've noticed that it makes you link out to Open C if it's like a really big buy. Yeah, it's um so that limits like zero point five ether at the moment, just because I was like a little bit unsure about how people would use it and stuff. So I thought um if I keep the limit low for now, we can get a little you know get some people buying it and using it. Because if like the first thing someone tries to buy is like a twelve ether thing, and like some the how there was a bug and the money got sent to the wrong NFT or it bid on the wrong auction or something like that, uh -huh. that would be is that quite an expensive mistake to undo? Like I don't think that would happen because I've tested it pretty thoroughly but I just wanted to get a little bit of momentum of it working at lower amounts. And then once it's good, then we can like ratchet that up and then let people do kind of higher value stuff. Cause those ENS names, right. Most of those sell for well over or for an ether or more. And so, yeah, it's, um, I was thinking like, like, like crypt, small crypto voxels parcels sell for under half an ether and um, like all the little hats and stuff that when we start selling those, I think those will sell for like 0.1 or 0.05 or 0.01 ether. So that'll work for that case. But yeah, it doesn't work very well for high value items at the moment. Yeah. Is that why you put the links are kind of spoopy? And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need to well, see the thing is that links are spoopy is fine for things that are actually links where they can be to anywhere on the internet. But it definitely shouldn't show that message when you go into OpenSea because I know OpenSea is fine. It should just pop up with a little summary of what about the NFT. And then it should say click here to go through to OpenSea and view bids and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm going to... Uh, yeah, that, I, I, that, that popped up on my radar today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, every once in a while I find something like that in, in Crypto Voxels and it's just really cool. It's really funny because it adds that, um, that personal feel to it. It's just kind of cool. Every, every time you try and go to the docks and it goes to the loading screen of the docks and it says Amigas and Ataris were the best computers, I'm just like, what? so fucking confusing for anyone who just wants to find the documentation, but it makes me laugh every time. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, my, my favorite little Easter egg in the whole thing is the womp. Like, yeah. I feel like that's become quite a thing now, but um, ever since I first heard it, it's, it's just like, I expect to hear it when I go to crypto voxels and I kind of wait around for it. Cause it's just almost so distinct now. Yeah. It's funny, right? Like, cause I've got it running in the background now and, um, <laughs> And like, yeah, you can hear, it's basically the heartbeat of the world. You can hear people coming in. And the thing is, because there's that separate sound for the leaving womp, um, you don't hear it instantly. People don't womp into the world and then leave like two seconds later. Oh, this sucks. You know, you hear them walk or that you can hear that they must be in the world for a period of time before they leave. And that's quite amazing. Like when you look at Google Analytics, I think we've got like an average dwell time of like five minutes or something. 
it's quite interesting, you know, people womp in and you can hear they stay in the world for a while. If you go on Google Analytics, we have an average site visit time of like five minutes or something where it's like previously where I've done web based stuff, you know, people might stay on the website for 20 or 30 seconds, but crypto voxels, obviously a lot of people find their way into the world and then they go exploring. Um, right. Either that or I guess the medians totally, the means totally messed up because there are people that stay in there for hours. I'm not sure. I, I almost think that I think a lot of people hear the womp, obviously. I think there should be like some kind of description saying that when you hear the womp, there are other people in the world um, or a way for you to connect to those people. Maybe that'll keep people in world longer. Yeah, I, I definitely think that social aspect of it is quite weak at the moment. Um, and there's one feature which I think will be massive. Well, it's like a couple of interlinked things. Nick was talking about it. When someone joins the world, it should say anonymous joined or a username joined. And then you should be able to click on that person's name and then teleport to where they are. Um, I think that'd be awesome. Like it would even solve that problem where you'll see people chatting in the chat and they'll be talking about something cool and you'll want to go find them and you have to ask them where they are and then look it up on the map and then work out how to get there. It's like a really crazy UI where really if you could just click on their name and then teleport next to them, that would be amazing. And then you could find people in the world quite fast. Yeah, that'd be sweet. I mean, that's just like a social network on steroids, being able to take people right to the other person, have them teleport if they choose to. Yeah, totally. And like, and because I find when you're actually standing near people, because you can see what they're looking at, you get a kind of a good idea of whether they're into, you know, if you guys are interested in the same things, because they'll look at one art piece for longer than another, or, you know, they'll just go exploring. And another thing about exploring, um, I'm not sure if you saw the video, but I've got this kind of feature branch, which is getting pretty close, where you can search in world, there's like a little search bar, you can click where you want to go. And then it draws a blue line in the world in front of you, like um, Google Maps, turn by turn directions that takes you to the other place. Yeah, I saw that. Um, yeah, so I want to get, hopefully I'll get that turned on next week because it's a really cool feature because, you know, you can search for something that you know is cool. But when you're walking there, you find all this other crazy stuff. Like whenever I am testing it out, I, you know, draw a line from one end of the world to the other. And halfway there, I'll have got distracted by something neat that I saw on the way because I'm super, like I, I'm aware of it as much as anyone. Like it's really hard to keep track of where you are when you're just walking around like that little tiny mini map and you don't know if you're facing north or not. And I always get turned around and I just find it really hard to find my way around the world without getting confused. So kind of making it easier to keep track of where you are, maybe street signs, maybe like a, 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 a subtitle at the bottom of the screen saying whereabouts in the world you are. I think there's a few things like that, which can make like navigation better and then making the social aspect better, like being able to hang out with people and kind of do more with each other. I think there's like heaps of really fertile land or ground to, to build some cool features. Yeah, the directions are really, really hard to figure out. I mean, especially especially because crypto voxels are getting so big. Um, but it kind of sounds like the whole blue line thing is going to be like a little bit of a Google Maps for crypto voxels. It kind of takes you where you want to go, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think it'll also it'll make quite a big uh, step forward in terms of people. Because if you go to crypto voxels, if you find us through the Twitter or the Instagram, like I think there's the links and you can kind of warp into these cool, cool galleries, like just straight into them. But if you just go to the homepage and hit play, you land at zero, zero. And like all the good stuff's quite a long way away and it's really hard to find. So I think a lot of people probably like, this is amazing, but they don't realize all the cool stuff that's in there. So I really need to like surface it and like show people, this is how you get to a cool gallery. This is where a joy gallery is. This is how you get to Frankfurt. This is how you get to the cool stuff in the Oasis with the public build areas. So I think like having some way in world of like, exploring around meeting other people and then like being able to find other cool stuff i think that would make a really kind of fun shared experience and a good experience for new people as well yeah that would be awesome i i feel like there's going to be some 30 third party that comes along that's going to help promote or feature different places and crypto voxels that kind of help navigate people on this um almost virtual super highway um, yeah, because a lot of people they they pop right into the world and they see what's what where they're at and what's around them and everything and the lack of directions and a header too, lack of a compass other than seeing which way, which direction you're walking on the map. Oh, I know um, that's so hard, right? You just have to keep walking in direction, turn 90 degrees until you work out which way is North. It's just like right. stuff like that should be <laughs> so much easier. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I keep thinking that I'm going North and then I, I'm, I, I look up and I'm like, wait, and then in the real world, that's north. And I'm like, but in the computer, that's north. And then, <laughs> oh I yeah, get... true. Because no, no, the thing is, in the real world, that is north in the southern hemisphere. Um, like the sun, yeah, like the sky is rendered from the point of view of Wellington. So um, mm -hmm. the sky 
the sun's probably in the wrong hemisphere for you guys up in the northern hemisphere. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, of course, the entire world seems upside down to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gets, yeah, it gets a little confusing sometimes, especially when I jump into Unity because Unity loads really slow. It's really freaking cool though, um, but I get really lost in Unity. Like I can never find my way around. Yeah, so the Unity one's interesting. Um, I was just writing up a blog post on it. I haven't finished it yet, but I was just writing up why, because, um, you know, I had that, I did that announcement. I was like, I'm going to spend 100 days on Unity. Every day I'm going to do a little bit on the Unity engine. And so I did it for like 10 days or for like a week or so. And then I was like, I, I just don't have the time to do a really good job of this. Like I can right. do a really good job of the Babylon one, but I can't do a good job of the Babylon one and the Unity one. Like once with, there's some more people working here, I think the Unity one would be awesome. But then also, um, Jin showed me this thing called ExoKit, which is like a super fast, kind of like a web browser, but not really, more like a JavaScript runtime for doing super fast WebGL stuff. And you can do, you can get like this, the app, which is written in Babylon JS, like the, the current website, and you can run it on this ExoKit, and then it'll run super fast on the Oculus Quest or on the Rift or on the Oculus Go or the Vive. And so when I saw that, I was like, man, I can like just do everything in JavaScript It'll still go really fast on VR headsets um, and then, you know, get re- come back around to the Unity thing in like a year's time or something. So that's when I open sourced it. But then the cool thing that came out of open sourcing it is that one of the guys that works with VR chat has taken the, the source code, which is the Unity client's made of, um, and uh, he's working out how to import the city into VR chat. So it'll be a world in VR chat that you can walk into and walk around and they, they could just do every day. They could dump out a copy of the city, turn it into a VR chat world. And then you could explore it with your friends, which is like a really crazy idea and kind of bends my mind, but it's also an awesome idea. Cause it means like, you know, it's going to be a while until all the social aspects of um, crypto voxels are as strong as they are in VR chat. Like VR chat's amazing for spending time with people. So like being able to like walk in with five of your friends and then go explore the city, it won't be as fully featured as actual going to the Crypto Voxels website, but you know, you're able to see each other and talk and it's got animated skeletons and you can like, you know, play games with each other as you run around the world. So that was a really interesting idea. And it's such a cool thing to come out of what's come from the Unity development so far. Um, and then, you know, over time, we might end up with a full client in Unity as well. Yeah, VR chat's really interesting. I, it's one of the few things that I've, haven't tried yet because i have the oculus go i don't have the the quest or the rift anymore um which i'm going to try and get the quest it looks freaking sweet the quest is amazing i've got one on my desk here and it is amazing yeah have you liked it how's it been going yeah so it's amazing um i had i have a, a rift and i have an oculus go and i really like the oculus go because i could put it in my bag and i could use it everywhere and i didn't have to plug it into my computer i didn't have to start up a windows computer I didn't have to update it I didn't have to be plugged into it you know it's just free form but the Oculus Go gives me a terrible headache because you've only got that rotational tracking, not the positional. You can't move your head side to side. So I was really excited to try the Oculus Quest because it's got that convenience of you just put it on your face, you can use it in the van, you can use it in the lounge, you can use it in my office. Put it on your face and then you've got hand track controllers. So I was really excited to try it out. I got it here. Um, I played Beat Saber. I played uh, Robo Recall. Oh, not Robo Recall. Uh, Space Pirate Trainer. Super awesome. I was just like blowing my mind. And then um, I went and plugged it in, uh, came into my office here and I fired it up in debug mode and I uh, got uh, CryptoVoxels to launch in it. And then I kind of messed around with it and made a better teleporter and stuff. And it was amazing. Like it, it CryptoVoxels feels like it feels quite futuristic when you first see it. And I still find it a really kind of, it's a really novel and exciting place to be. But when you do it in a VR headset, it's quite otherworldly. Like it's this, it's this place that exists uh, and, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, I don't know what you, it gives me a hardcore metaverse vibe. You're in this physical 3D place that you can kind of warp around, and yeah, it's 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 quite it's quite mind blowing doing the voxels and the quests. So that'll definitely be on the list next week. Will be to finish up the support that I've been doing and then turn it on so that everyone with a quest can um, load it in the Oculus browser and then just womp into the world. That's super awesome, and it gets me excited. I got to go out and get a Oculus Quest just so I can do that. Let alone, um, but that kind of plays into um, your original idea for crypto voxels as being a metaverse, right? Or at least I saw on the press page. Yeah, yeah, totally. I've been working on metaverse stuff since um, since I'm like since I met Nick back in like 2005. Like um, he had like this uh kind of peer to peer um C plus plus 
kind of metaverse thing. I can't remember. I think it's called the Digital Sunshine Project that he built mm. in like the year 2000. And then in like the year 2005, I started working on one using like C++ and stuff and just trying to make a multi-user 3D kind of world. I didn't know what I was doing back then. And so I'd write this uh, metaverse in C++. And um, I'd only run it for 60 seconds while I was testing it. And then I'd quit it and then launch it again after I made another change. And um, I didn't find out that I was leaking memory at like a gigabyte a, gigabyte a minute. <laughs> no, it makes me think of um, Ready Player One. Um, I, I think a lot of people, when they, when they uh, think of VR now, they kind of think of the idea that Ready Player One um, kind of puts into your head where you can walk into this metaverse and you can do all these different things. There's almost infinite universes of possibilities. And CryptoVoxels really feels like one. Um, and I've, I've been able to jump into CryptoVoxels on the Oculus Go a little bit. Um, but from what I've seen in some uh, photos and videos where you can like you can actually see the controllers like in your hands in CryptoVoxels, I mean, it feels so interactive. It's very exciting. Yeah, like the the metaverse thing is yeah, it's totally inspired by Snow Crash, which was like a Neil Stevenson book, and then Ready Player One, which is just describing this kind of three D space. And um, yeah, so it's it's totally what it what it was based on, and and what what I'm trying to build with it. One like this, <laughs> uh, one of the weird things about um, crypto voxels is it's based on the work of voxel.js, which was um, a bunch of open source modules to create like a voxel engine. Um, in like in the in the browser um and two of the original authors or contributors to uh voxel.js were max ogden and james halliday um which was two names i think from the ready player one book just randomly they had similar names to two of the authors in that book and then my name's nolan like the bad dude on um <laughs> ready player one at like nolan surrender and so yeah <laughs> i just i like that there's that little bit of crossover yeah, I really want to do April Fools where I cover up ninety five percent of the screen with advertising, <laughs> <laughs> which I think is what what they're planning to do with the metaverse. If um, IOI ever ever finds all the Easter eggs, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> but no, there won't be any advertising on the screen or the heads up display. That's not going to happen. That, that's I get. Yeah, I guess that's the thing too. Is like um, the monetization of crypto voxels. Like, I feel a bit funny with color sometimes because like. I want to limit color in the world because I think um, I think it's cool that the entire world's not correct. That the, most of the world is kind of same colors, but then occasionally there's when you see something really colorful, it, it really stands out. And so I think having the color token to do that is the best way to do it. But I I don't want to seem like I'm nickel and diming people. I don't want people to feel like they have to buy the land and they have to buy color and then they have to pay for hosting and all this kind of stuff. So I feel like that's quite a delicate line to walk of like how you make a commerce in the set in the world, but without trying to charge everyone fees for every single thing that they may want to do, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think most people understand though, um, that when you buy color, um, it, it goes to obviously supporting CV and development of crypto voxels in general. I, I, there's a lot of people that expect free stuff or that like some free stuff, um, especially in the crypto verse, cause they're used to getting, um, airdrops and tokens all the time. But no, I totally understand the idea, and I actually like the whole black and white aspect. It does really make it unique, and then the color, every once in a while, you see that splashed onto a parcel or splashed onto a certain area, and it really does make it stand out or pop out, and it's very attractive. Yeah, that big tower in Frankfurt that I think Sun made, where it's like every single one, every single voxel is a different color, like that looks amazing mm. in my mind, I think, you know, um, and the when the, when the when um, uh, there's the... Is it the Nian cat that's yeah. kind of near the origin? Yeah, it's super cool. So I, I think it's, yeah, I think it's kind of worked out quite well, that that balance there. And also I like using color to reward good builds. So to encourage people to actually build, you know, to not just buy land and speculate, but to actually build stuff on it. I'll often go back and give people some color after that if they message me. Um, and so I, I like having that way. So I like, because, you know, like good builds take a lot of time. And so I like, I like people to be rewarded for it by having traffic or by having people visit their gallery or by like promoting it on the Twitter or by like sending them some color. So it's really important to me that people's art gets discovered and that their labor and their work gets discovered. Yeah. It's a great incentive, especially after you spend all day clicking for every single voxel. I feel like a couple of times I was going to sprain my finger or something. <laughs> yeah yeah i i'm glad i added that um click and drag so you can build it a little bit faster but that's also got some bugs too because i've used that a few times and i've kind of annihilated my build so <laughs> it um 
yeah, like the, the click every single voxel to make it work it, it was really slow. But I spent like a couple of weeks getting that dialed in as good as it could. So I need to spend some more time. I've done a bit of work on the build tools recently because like, um, it's funny, the build tools, when you work on them, like unless you're a parcel owner, you never really see them. But then we will add public editing probably soon. Like you can have some parcels which anyone can edit. But um, making better build tools, I think, is really awesome. Like it just makes it easier for the people that are building the cool shit in the city. Because that's the thing too, is like, I'm a terrible builder. Like, I don't know if you've seen, like I made, I've got the <laughs> Elon Musk smoking weed um, parcels. Yeah, and I've got. <laughs> I saw that yesterday. Um, and I've got, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I've got like parcel number two, which is like this kind of like half finished thing, which I, <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, I was very clear that I'm a, I'm a terrible builder, but I, so I love seeing other people do cool stuff with the world. Um, yeah, people just do some mind blowing stuff. I'm a better programmer than a builder, which is, which is fine. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, you, you, you built crypto voxels yet yeah, you're you might be one of the worst builders <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> and and that's like um and so like if i'm gonna hold some land because i think i've got like about 20 parcels that i'm keeping for myself and i've built on most of them but you know it's all pretty basic stuff but i really need to make an effort of being like uh, adding collaborators to them and say hey look you can do whatever you want here um you know this, this is the center of area 51 um build some really cool stuff here because um you know i want to hold that parcel i want to build something there eventually but yeah, I just can't leave it empty because you know, like, I'd say I'm not, I'm not sure, but like when you walk around, it feels like about forty percent of the city has been bought and not built, which I think is pretty awesome. Like over half of the parcels have at least some attempts mm -hmm. at builds on them, and I would say eighty or ninety percent people have at least um, changed the default build on them. Like, there's you get very, very few where there's absolutely nothing there at all, where it's just been totally undeveloped, um, uh, which is I think pretty awesome because like, and that's a big part of why I release the land slowly, like. It'd be cool to do like a ICO style auction rush kind of thing. But then I think people in maybe like Wales maybe might buy, I don't know. I think some people might buy lots of land and then just hold it and then sell it in the future, um, which doesn't really happen so much at the moment. Like um, Sun, for example, Sun buys a lot of land, um, which is at auction and then resells it. But he develops them all as well. Like he builds cool neighborhoods and he adds stuff to them, which I think is a super valuable, useful thing for people to do is to like, build up neighborhoods you know you should totally um that's just a really cool cool thing to have someone doing that in the world yeah yeah i love the fact that he builds them out and then auctions them off or sells them Cause, I mean, there's a lot of properties that a lot of people are squatting um that you don't really hear from very often and they're completely empty too which kind of sucks and yeah. is unfortunate but i mean i guess that's just how it goes well I think I think what we're going to do, like we've talked about it a bit, so I think it's not I think it's not too much of a surprise to everyone. But I think we're going to say if you've never built on the parcel at all, or if it's got like just basically nothing built on it, it's going to revert to nature. So I'll probably like create some uh, procedural voxel trees that grow and stuff like that, and maybe some like a little animals or something. So it'll just be kind of overgrown, and then you can come back in at any stage and clear it away if you if you know if you want it to be an empty blank parcel in the world, that's your right. You can go back and delete that stuff. But if you just leave it with, undeveloped for weeks and weeks and weeks it'll start to develop some nature on it so you'll have all these kind of overgrown properties so i think that's a, a nice thing where you don't lose ownership of your thing mm -hmm. um and if you're like fuck you i just want it to be an empty space you can do that but um if you if you just bought it and then forgot about it or lost your keys or whatever um we'll just kind of let it grow into a nice nature which is maybe fun to explore something like that yeah that's awesome so it, it's turned into like default like a grassland or a park or a forest or something while they're not developing on it. Yeah, exactly. Some kind of overgrown. Like if you built half a warehouse and then like left it for a hundred years and it kind of got overgrown. I think that um, that's that's kind of the idea. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. So, but if I lay a couple block voxels and I don't come back for a while and it gets overgrown, how do I mow the lawn? Do, do I just <laughs> yeah. start building, or is there going to be a voxelized lawn mower? Or <laughs> that's a cool idea. Um, yeah, you could totally make a voxelized lawnmower, right? Go through and like manually delete them. But then like if you own 20 parcels and you're trying to keep them in order, well, you have to pay some kid to go around and then mow the lawn on all your parcels. <laughs> that'd, that'd be fun. I'd love to have my own voxelized landscaper business and go around and advertise that. <laughs> that'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, that would be. <laughs> what about live auctions like in the world? 
I, I think I've mentioned it once or twice, and I think we've talked about it in the Discord a few times, or the community has, but what if there were like live auctions like in world for like certain types of properties? Because I know some of them, like Frankfurt, are pretty unique, and I know that there's been talk about doing them underground as well, like a subterranean neighborhood. So so there's so there's a few things going on there. Um one is like uh there's no voice chat at the moment. Like it's meant to be there, but it doesn't work. So we couldn't actually, you know, you couldn't actually right. do a, a, a voice chat one. Second one is if it would be cool if we had like sub chat rooms in world. So you could create an auction room where people could like text chat with each other and then not be spamming the general chat with everyone. So, and also, so you wouldn't have general chat getting in your auction. The third one is we did do a live event like about five months ago where um, a friend of mine uh, jumped up on screen or I think I did as well, but yeah, I have no, my friend of mine and I live streamed him into the world. So it played on a video in a parcel in the music district in like his dance club. And so people came to that. So that was kind of like a, like a, the, one of the first events we did. Um, and then there was the recently the, the art gallery and I saw a lot of people going out into that gallery that had an opening last week. And so I think, yeah, I think an auction would be like, I think there's a few bits of tech that have to be built and have to work well, but I think it's a, a live auction is a really cool idea. Um, and in terms of like, yeah, when you creating new districts with um, unique features like Subterranean, I think will be really cool. That's actually maybe cool as Subterranean. It's a cool name for a neighborhood. But yeah, like... Um, Subterranean. Yeah, yeah but, that sounds cool. Yeah, it does sound cool. Eh? Uh, yeah, I, I think... I think, like, for example, it would have been really cool to have a live auction for the tallest. So is Zip Tower the tallest building in Frankfurt, or is it... I'm not sure if it is, or if it's, just, it's um, like I, one of the top five. I think it's the tallest by, like, one or two voxels, or, like, one or two meters. Um, yeah. I remember, remember looking at that when um, I was bidding, when he got into a bidding war with, I think it was Jin. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I was trying to figure out which ones were the tallest, and I was just going to drop some ether bags on that <laughs> um <laughs> and, and yeah i think it was like 41 42 meters and then the next tallest was the one josie has now that's like 41 or 40 it's like barely taller barely yeah. taller but i mean had to get it <laughs> yeah totally oh no it's it's such a cool place to hang out and it's also it's quite a different way to use parcels right because like because everything else is intentionally low rise, it means you can walk into a parcel and then walk out of a parcel straight away, you know, because everyone's kind of got two doors. And so you don't really have, but once you go into one of those towers, I find that you spend a lot of time inside that parcel because you're looking at each floor, you've got to go up the stairs or go up the elevator um, or teleport up. And then you're looking at the at the detail on everyone. I love that people are kind of like um, renting out floors of the tower. Like, yeah, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff in, and also, I didn't know if the engine would handle it at all. You know, like I'd optimize the engine to run pretty well for those low-rise parcels. And so mm -hmm. the high-rise parcels have like five times or um, six or seven or eight times the volume of the smaller ones. And so I was stoked that it worked as well as it did. Um, and so I I think I probably will maybe have some, have a, a few other kind of medium-rise things, things that are a little bit, that are higher than the rest of the world, but not definitely not as high as Frankfurt because I want that to be unique. That would be sweet having a medium rise neighborhood. I mean, I think after Frankfurt, it's just the volume of voxels that you can put in there and the amount of space that you can utilize. Like when I was building in some of them in Frankfurt, like I didn't know what to put in there. So I started running out of ideas because they were so big. So I'm used to the smaller parcels. And then it, it makes sense almost that you need like another neighborhood that's at least like a mid rise or something to kind of give people the idea to creatively explore a little bit. Yeah, I, I agree. Well, it's also because like something I've noticed is like once I do a cool build or what I think is a cool build, like my Elon Musk tribute, um, or like <laughs> I've got one about some of the some of the mission controllers at NASA. Like once I've done a build, I don't want to go back in and change it for something else. I kind of want to get a new parcel or a new area for a new idea and to leave. And then I go back and I edit the old build and add bits to it, but I kind of keep whatever the original theme and setting for it was. And so if you've got this, you know, five, four or five or 10 story building in your case, um, you can build all those empty rooms and then you can come back and later on go, man, I really want to make a tribute to Rick and Morty or man, I really want to make a tribute to this. And then you can use one of those spaces to do it. And it's kind of cool if, you're, um, if your parcel is big enough that you can have all those things in one place rather than having to try and buy the one across the street or, yeah, but that, in that case, like, that's where I think this kind of like, um, blue line that shows you around would be pretty cool so if you have a parcel here and then you buy a new parcel in the next suburb or a couple of streets over you could 
instead of teleporting to the other parcel, you could press a button in your parcel and then it'll show a blue line how to get to the other one. So I think linking together people's, like people making tours of like, this is where my parcel is and this is where the next one is will be quite cool. Yeah, that that will be definitely cool. It'll be exciting to kind of see that stuff develop and it's it's filling up quickly. Like I, what are we, one third of the way to having all the parcels yeah, released? And- yeah, we're one third of the way to having Origin City sold out. And then I think once Origin City sells out, um, like there's always the possibility of just capping the contract, like turning off minting after Origin City sells out. But I, I kind of, I'm not sure if I want to do that or not. Like it's, you know, that's not going to be until way later in the year at the current kind of pace. Um, but I'd like to sell it out before the end of this year. And then there'll definitely be kind of like a break. And then if we do keep, if we do create enough, like more cities or other towns outside, there's going to be like a river all the way around the outside of Origin City. So anyone who's actually up against the border of it will have river on the outside of their parcel. And then we might have like kind of four or eight bridges that go from Origin City and in, out into the rest of the world. But yeah, there's also the possibility that depending on how color goes, depending on how hats go, depending on a few different things, we might just also cap it at 3000 at the at Origin City, which would be pretty amazing, um, you know, just to have this really kind of dense kind of populated city. Right. Um, but then there's other things like if we wanted to have like a red light district or whatever, I'm not sure I want that in Origin City. I think mm-hmm. I want to keep it um, uh, G-rated. So, right. or, you know, kind of like um, PG-13 in the city. So that may make sense to have outside. But then it's like maybe if you do other cities, maybe they're on other contracts, but then you can't walk from one to another. You have to teleport to them. How do you get into other worlds? Like how do you walk in? Yeah, so there's there's a lot of things to work out when we get towards the end of that. But yeah, like we're a third of the way through, which is crazy. Because I remember, it does not seem that long ago that I minted the first four parcels and sold them to my friends. Um, it's, so it's it's pretty crazy that, yeah, there's a thousand now. It's a hundred times the size of, 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 you know, I remember when the first bank of crypto voxels, which is sadly gone, was built. And I thought that was the coolest build I'd ever seen. And um, yeah, and now there's a hundred times as many parcels as there was back then. Yeah, it's grown so quickly, especially the last couple of months too. Like there's a lot of volume that's come into CV in terms of buying parcels and a lot more people walking around the community. Like I'm actually bumping into people um, every once in a while. It's really cool. Yeah, I bump into people a lot as well. And it kind of makes me want to have like there's a, so the avatar, there's a bunch of animations, which I have in that file, which is loaded in at the moment, but I just haven't enabled a way to show them because like, you can wave at people like it's this cool wave animation and you mm-hmm. can uh, you can like um, fall over and you can like do a chicken dance and stuff. And so I'd love to have these little ways to interact with each other. Um, I'd like to be able to do more than just kind of text chat. I'd love to be able to really interact when you run into these people. So that's, um, I feel the social tools are slowly starting to get better now and it'll be cool to get them better and better. Because when you meet someone, it is really cool to have a little chat with them and be like, yeah, yeah it's, it's very cool. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely something that I'm really looking forward to in crypto voxels is the ability to create gestures or use emojis or or voice chat. Um, if we get yeah. voice chat working well, I, I'd love to do podcasts in crypto voxels as well. I've been thinking about building a little voxelized studio and everything, and trying to get people in the world to do like a podcast um, rather oh, than just awesome. yeah, rather than just like on. Um, VR chat or whatever, but it'd be cool to do it like in world in crypto voxels. Yeah, totally. yeah, I, th- I think that would be really cool. And you could just have people wander in, which is kind of which is pretty good. Yeah, I, I love. Um, I've worked. I've I've done. I've spent like twice now. I've spent a couple of days working on the voice multi user voice chat, and it always sort of works okay here. And then as soon as I put it on the internet, it just goes away altogether. So I'll solve it eventually, but it's. <laughs> It's just, it's, it's it, currently it's my, what do you call it? Your water law or something. It's my little feature that I just can't quite seem to nail. Yeah. What's the, what's the complication with voice chat? Is it just the VOIP like over internet? So it's quite, because, because I decided to, because we're not doing the unity client at the moment, um, the, we're just using WebRTC, which is built into all the browsers and it works on Safari and on Firefox and on Chrome and on Brave, which is really cool. Um, and so you can get, if you, if you hit, M or V, maybe V, like then it'll actually ask for permission to use your microphone and then it'll start transmitting. The complicated thing is like um, the Web- WebRTC topology, you have to connect to everyone else who's nearby. So you have to find people in nearby, you have to send over some signaling data so they can connect directly through your firewall to your computer. And um, then you need to establish, establish that connection with them. You need to 
get access to the microphone, which means you have to ask the browser in a certain way, and then you have to re-establish the connection with the person you're trying to talk to once you've actually got your microphone. And so there's just like a, a bunch, you, I think I'm using like three or four APIs to do it, and it's all asynchronous, and it's just, it, it, it like I say, it works fine when I test it here. And when I go online, I can chat with some people, but it's definitely not reliable. I think there's issues talking between Chrome and Firefox. Um, it's just really a case of time. I just need to sit down for like two or three days, um, test it on a whole bunch of devices, and I'd pretty much get it nailed. But, um, you know, my time is always super split when I'm working on crypto voxels. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, like it's, it's, it's uh, you know, there's a couple of features. Like scripting, for example, that's like something that I really want to turn on. And I was talking to my friends last night. And I was like, I'm pretty sure it would take one solid day to get a basic scripting API uh, released and documented. But like, <laughs> you know, the days where I wake up with heaps of energy and pour a good coffee and then good music on, and I've got the whole day in, uninterrupted. Like it's, they're, they're just, you know, I'm always being torn by a million things. I'm on the discord or I'm updating Uniswap or I'm on OpenSea or I'm like helping people out or I'm, you know, going in and fixing stuff. So it's like, it's funny how seldom you get like a whole day where you can just put your head down, block the world out and then just smash a feature out. But yeah, it's hard, right? So I wake up and I check in the discord and there's all this cool chat and there's this cool stuff going on. And then some days I'm like, no, you just got to ignore it. You just got to go and work on some feature and kind of get it a bit further along. Um, you know, last week I felt really lost because I was working on the image server because uh, there were some galleries that people had that um, were showing. There's a guy that had a gallery with like 40 of his crypto kitties in it. And it took like two minutes for it to load when you went there. It was crazy slow. And so in fixing that, I had to rewrite the whole image server in a different language and test it and do a whole bunch of stuff and it felt really weird because it's like you're fixing one person's gallery and you're doing three or four days worth of work to do it doesn't add any features but then once i actually did it everything loaded so much faster and it was totally worth the work but sometimes when you're in the middle of those kind of features that don't really add anything to the world they're just kind of maintenance they're just making fixing existing bugs it feels you can get a little bit lost because it's really you know when i just add a feature in half an hour and it makes add something cool to the world that always feels really satisfying but like the way the world works is if it loads fast um, and if it's reliable for people, that's that's what keeps people coming back and what gives people faith to build stuff in the world, to buy land, to put the effort into building big, big parcels. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, sometimes it feels like um, you get into a groove and all of a sudden all these new features like come flying out of like Discord. It's every once in a while, my, my Discord will be pretty quiet, like other than like the trades notifications and like every once in a while someone talking on like uh, the, in one of the channels. But then I wake up one day and all of a sudden Lord Nolan has dropped all kinds of new features to the world and has en enhanced our universe. <laughs> just whipping up some black magic <laughs> chemistry. And I'm just like, whoa, okay, he's got all these new features. <laughs> yeah, so I can't work out how that, like what, what causes that, why it comes out in such big lumps. But it's fine. You know, it kind of keeps the, keeps, the, keeps the energy up um, and it keeps the momentum up, so... Yeah, but yeah, it's, 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 I would hate to be like, no one does planning for this, you know, it's just me working on it, but I'd hate to be my manager if I was planning this, because <laughs> I'd have to say, <laughs> when's that peach coming out? Don't know, but when it does come out, I'll release four other ones on the same day. <laughs> I don't, is that you talking to yourself? Because you're kind of the employee. And yeah, the yeah, 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 I'm I the can, boss can... and the employee. <laughs> Yeah, I can see you looking to the right saying that and then looking back at the left. I don't know when it's coming out. <laughs> yeah, I think I think once I have some other people working on the Uncrypto Voxels at some point, I'd love, I've kind of got this rough idea that it'd be cool if you had someone working with you to say, okay, do half the time, like fix stuff. Um, and then half the time, just add cool stuff, you know, add whatever you think would be awesome to add to the world. And I think if you got the right people working with you, like hired the right people and like, found people who are really motivated about the metaverse and about building a big shared kind of virtual world on Ethereum, then they would have cool ideas and you'd want them to build whatever they want. You know, someone comes in, they're like, I want to add this, you know, or we need to add this to the world. They don't have to have permission. They're just like, yeah, okay, if it's a cool idea, do it and see if the community likes it. I think that would be, I don't know if that's a realistic way to work with people, but it's what I would love to do in theory. I almost think you need to start like a Trello page. Um, so you can like put out all your ideas and things that you'd like to work on as well as the things you're already working on. Yeah. Um, and then the community can kind of like take a look and vote on it as well. Cause I know you probably have a lot of ideas, but you're not sure if it's worth doing. That's a good point because I do have, yeah, like I, I could just like, especially cause like a lot of these ideas, I've got like a little prototype of it. So I could take a screenshot of what it kind of looks like 
and then I could put it on the trailer and it would actually, or some kind of thing where people could vote features. Cause yeah, like it's, cause it is, there's so many different things you could work on at any one time. And it's always just a guess about whether you're working on the right thing. And it's, it seems like I hit the right thing if, fairly often, but um, as you get more and more, it's, it's, I guess it kind of annoys me when I realize that there's some easy feature that I could have done in half an hour or an hour. And people have been waiting on that for months and months and months and months, or it's been making builds really slow or it's made something, you know, there's just like these kind of quite low hanging fruit, which when I'm unaware of how much, um, how much they're affecting the community. So it would be, yeah, something, something where people could say, Hey, look, this is, you know, we're all finding this an issue. It would be awesome if you could fix that it would be cool. Right. Yeah. I, I think almost anything you whip up and at the moment, everyone's really happy with, but I know there's some ish, uh, some controversy between like certain people on what they'd like to see in crypto voxels, like, um, like capping the world, for example. I know that there's some people in the Discord community that want to see um, crypto voxels stay capped and not get any bigger after it's reached that point. And I know that there are other people that would like to see new cities um, and go over the river and then and continue building um, almost infinitely. Yeah, it's interesting with the with the edge of the city. I think I think the way to solve that for both people, if we do keep building, which I'm leaning towards at the moment, is we really need to make it needs it needs to stop for a while. Like once once this origin city is sold out, is there needs to be like two or three months where there's just no more sales, nothing grows outside of it. But then we use that month to build the edge of the city really well. So there's like rivers and there's parklands and there's like you know it just it, and then also to let the city kind of infill on itself. You know to let these people that are holding land um, get offers on their parcels so that they'll resell just to let Origin City go up in value to make the navigation better to have these kind of guides or this, you know, these third party websites that can give you an overlay of where to explore in the city just to make Origin City really thriving. Um, I think if you got to the edge and then the next day you created another Origin City just on the, on the, just to the West and then started selling it straight away, I think that would be kind of, you know, I think selling at Origin City will be momentous and so I want it to be a big party. And then I want everyone who has it to be like, holy crap, I own a bit of this, you know, pivotal, crucial city in the metaverse. And so, yeah, it definitely it needs to be it needs to be a big deal and it needs to be celebrated. And we need to build value in Origin City and everyone that owns and it has to feel that they're kind of part of something really special. And so I think if we do that properly, then I think people will be OK with building a bridge out and then building a small thing off in the distance. I think, yeah, that that's what I'm leaning towards at the moment, but you know, we've got the whole year to work out how, how exactly to approach that. Yeah. I'd lean towards that as well. Um, just because, I mean, once you get like an, um, a mass amount of people in, tr in terms of traffic, um, exploring crypto voxels or wanting to own a piece of crypto voxels, that those parcels are going to run out very quickly. Like what's the total on the max parcels again? So, um, so origin city, I think it's got 3067 pre-computed. Um, um, and you can see the West end is the, is, is the West, uh, the North pole runs up on the North side, South pole, uh, South deep South hits up. And I don't know if we've got anything on the far East side yet, but, um, yeah, so you can actually see the size of it when you zoom out on the map. You can see what the size of it is. All those parcels are defined in size. They're not. They may change in height, and some of them will be subterranean. But um, uh, where where the actual laid out is already pre-computed, and where the streets are, so that that's all. They all already exist, and so in the database. And then when I just mint them onto the contract, um, it's just filling in that space. So there's yeah, there's about two thousand left, and there's uh, just over a thousand that have been created and sold. Yeah, so because I know, like at this point in stage, it's really easy to own like a couple parcels, or if you wanted to, you can own 20, 30 parcels, or even more than that, just because there's not enough people walking around in the world. But once you start getting thousands of people visiting crypto voxels, um, and everyone wants to own at least a parcel, then that number obviously diminishes very, very quickly. Um, and your ability to actually own something in the world goes very fast. And then all of a sudden the prices spike and everything. And to be able to own one is also going to cost you a lot of money. So it almost feels natural that over time, crypto voxels will expand outside of Origin City into maybe some new neighborhoods or new cities or yeah. however that ends up developing. And I think that's just how cities work, right? Like if you... Uh, if you have like a, a city, then you end up with suburbs outside of it. But like, to be honest, the suburbs won't be as attractive to be in because, you know, there might be 
way more parcels. But, you know, I think by concentrating on Origin City and making it exciting and encouraging people to develop the land, encouraging people to resell the land because the value is going up so that it gets bought by someone who wants to build something there. I think that's how you make it a really exciting place to be. And like, if you want to buy land in the best part of the world, you're always going to want to buy land in Origin City because, you know, that's where all the cool builds are. It's where the older stuff is. It's the, where the screenshots you've seen of CryptoVoxels. It's what people know about. Um, and so if we have, if, if we do expand on it, I guess the other thing is like you're saying about people is like, you know, once, uh, as the city is sold out, I want people to be quite expressive in their avatars. Like you might not be able to go and build something, but I want you to be able to like have a cool hat and dress your avatar up the way you want. I want you to be able to like have pets or to have things flying around you or to be able to share 3d objects with other people if they, if they, if they, you know, if they're your friend. So you won't be able to actually build a parcel and stuff, but I still want people to have like quite a lot of um, uh, a lot be able to express themselves and be able to like be a part of the world and contribute, even if they don't have land yet. Well, because just because you know, I don't, I don't want everyone to just be like the current avatar is so basic and the current interactions is so limited, and I don't want people to feel that they're a second class citizen just because they can't afford land. You know, I want it to be awesome if you own land. But I want you to also feel that you are a real part of the society, even if you're just walking around talking to people. Yeah, we really got to dress up the avatars because they look really, um, really plain. <laughs> but they are, they are super plain. Yeah, like it's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've so I've I've got that. Uh, I think there's some URL where it's there's a broken version of the um, hat configurator. So um, mm -hmm. I'm going to do some more work on that. So you create the little 32 by 32 by 32 voxel. You drag and drop it onto the one part of the avatar and then it'll stick there and it'll so it could be a hat or it could be some gloves or it could be some shoes or it could be a, a bum bag or something um and then those um little i think they, i think i called them hats which is something for like avatar accessory system i came yeah. up with some acronym for it and um but yeah it'll basically be anything you can attach anywhere on the body and so you'll be able to dress them up and then i don't know how to do this because of like turning it into a skeleton and stuff but i'd like to do like they do in vr chat where you can upload your own avatar completely so you can just draw an av a custom voxel avatar somehow we'll stick it through a skeleton and then you'll be able to use it so you'll actually be a totally customized person but with those same animations so that is the that is the that is the goal over time yeah that'd be interesting too i wouldn't mind just having voxelized attachments too i mean it kind of creates that in world vibe still and it kind of meshes with the whole crypto voxels culture that's going on um I, i'd hate for it to kind of migrate away too much and then end up getting too cartoonish or something too much more like uh vr chat yeah yeah it's 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 definitely a yeah it's a yeah well, I, well then yeah the first thing that'll be happening is just attachments to the existing avatar um and we'll see how well that looks i think it looks pretty cool when you put like a top hat on and once you can add like a monocle and like a little suit and like some fancy <laughs> shoes I think that'll be pretty cool. Yeah, we can discuss this at WompCon. So when's WompCon? Yeah, so I think so. I, I think the contract, uh, the CryptoVoxels land contract was run in June or July of last year. So I don't know whether I'll have time to get it together, but I want to do a virtual WompCon this year to celebrate 12 months of the contract. Um, and then um, I want to do like a, a real WompCon next year. Um, so pick some place in the world that everyone can get to and then we can all get together and... Um, yeah, like have a party and explore VR and wear our quests and kind of that that would be that would be amazing. But I think this year, I think a virtual WompCon with some talks and some presentations and like Q and A. Um, hopefully, some talks by some other people. Maybe people can some release some cool builds and we can all kind of travel around. I think that'd be nice. Also, it's like I think CryptoVoxels has a chance of being a pretty good place to have virtual conferences. Right. And also no carbon, right? Like we can all meet up without having to fly, you know, halfway around the world and generate tons of carbon. It was like a month ago or something, but we had like a giant like get together in crypto voxels. And I think we had like 30 avatars flying around uh, Frankfurt. Um, <laughs> and I was surprised how many people actually showed up because we wanted to do like a giant family photo in different places. Um, and it kind of worked out using the chat and everything. Um, but it, it felt like a bunch of bees just flying around, um, different parcels. It was really hard to organize everybody, but I mean, other than that, it was really cool. And you got that huge community vibe and everything. Um, and it felt really active yeah. when you got everybody in there too. It's gotta be a little way to like organize people. Yeah. So I reckon if we had that, and then if we had like separate chat rooms, 
so that you could like put them in a group. I think if you had a voice chat with the people that are near you, I think if you could spam emojis into the air and if you could, um, you know, like play little sound effects that were attached to your avatar and if you had like custom avatar stuff, that would start to be looking really cool. And you'd have this, you know, you'd have this noise and this kind of buzz. And so you could really kind of have the presence with all those other people. And I think that would be, that'll be a super exciting way. And it's not a whole bunch of features to build, you know, at which point you'd be really, yeah, it'd be a super cool way to explore with people. Yeah, that'd be an awesome way to uh, to socialize with people in world. What about videos or live streaming? Yeah, so we did that live streaming with Matt. Um, we played in his club about six months ago. And so all that's actually set up. Um, I should document it and just sort of so people can use it. Um, videos I want to support. Um, there's actually no real problem with it. The main thing with I just need to run them through the proxy server because I rewrote all the image proxy stuff. That should be quite doable. I think I'll probably have a limit on the size of them as well. Like they won't be... Um, just because they have to be stored, they have to be re-hosted on our server. So probably I'll only allow pretty small videos to start with. I'd also like to add animated GIF support, so um, make that kind of work. Um, yeah, so all that stuff's a lot closer than it, than, it, than it was. It's a lot, it's quite doable. Um, the live streaming works quite well. You use OBS on your computer, and then you connect to some crazy URL, it's like video.cryptovoxels slash something or other, and then it generates this unique string which you just paste into a video element on your on your wall and then people can click play and then it just starts streaming and i think it's got positional audio as well so as you walk away from the video it'll get quieter so all that stuff's going to work um i don't really see any reason not to do it um it was just mostly a case of i needed to redo the infrastructure because the old image server was crashing quite a lot um, and so this new one seems a bit more robust so i'll start adding support with more kinds of media and more kinds of objects um as um uh, once it proves to be nice and reliable yeah video and live streaming will be huge because it kind of gives you that ability to get people in the world for like a specific reason for like a like like doing a virtual womp con or doing or having a movie theater or doing a showing or playing some funny memes or like or gifts for example that'd be interesting too being or being able to put that interactivity in the world that that's something that sounds really exciting definitely look forward to that yeah, like whenever there's like a, you know, like a, a pump on Bitcoin, I really want to go and have a party at a, box, at a parcel somewhere where it's got that dancing Indian guy, you know, <laughs> on a loop. Like it's like, that would be cool to go there with people and then to have like a graph on the wall with the scripting API that shows the current Bitcoin price. Like stuff like that is a really cool thing to collaborate, congregate together. And I think like a, the particle stuff, like the particles are, you know, that little kind of smoke thing that people use. Yeah, that That's fun. really basic and you can't, yeah, but it, it's really nice that it adds motion to the world. It makes the world seem a lot realer. Like, oh, this is an actual thing. I'm not walking through a static place. It's got a little bit of motion plus the avatars. So I think having animated GIFs and videos will just kind of make the world seem more and more dynamic. Yeah, yeah, those are awesome. Like I've, I've been putting them like on top of buildings and it kind of gives you that like chimney effect a little bit. Um, and then it, it kind of also like really stands out. It's kind of like color when you add color to a parcel, it like pops out in the background and makes you want to go over there. Um, whole, yeah. whole animated smoky voxel thing. What, what was it called again? Uh, they called particle effects. The particle effects smoky voxel. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's, it's good. Cause they're like, uh, they seem like they run quite fast. Cause I've, I, I've read, I've, I've got some on my parcel and I was testing it on the Oculus quest and they were like buttery smooth so it's uh, i think they're, they're quite fast on the on the graphics card yeah the particle effects are pretty cool it it's very exciting to see but yeah thank you for coming on and everything definitely appreciate it i know the community will definitely love it thanks for coming on man yeah it's awesome thanks so much for talking to you i'll talk to you again in a couple of months sounds good all right man see you next time